welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new my name is jazz and i'm the owner of two small businesses the first being bella meets vinyl which is a shop for makers and the other is custom bella creations which is a shop for buyers where all my finished products are and where 90 percent of the things you see me making here are available to sell or to purchase excuse me now, in today's video, I have a few sweaters available on my shop. I have like a wifey sweater, I have a mommy sweater, a mama sweater, right? So on the sleeves, um, it's normally the children's names or date of births. And then if it's the wifey sweater, then it's their anniversary or, you know, like the date they met, etc. So I will be working on one of those actually for a really close friend. So thank you for purchasing and I'm going to take you guys along. I'm going to switch over to my digital view so you can see more or less the process of how I do the things that I make, right? So I normally use Canva. Canva is my go-to. I do have the Pro Edition and um, it does come with a couple extra features, but generally the main thing that I will be doing today should be free to most. All right, so let's get right into it. I have already a listing created. This is my actual listing. So basically, I just went ahead and duplicated this and got rid of all the things I do not need, right? So I've already done that for you down here based off of my client's purchase. I actually showed the client the option with um, the standard ampersand and dots and then with hearts. They chose to go with the hearts. But let me show you more or less how I do this, right? Let's customize it. So again, let me get rid of all this extraness and I will explain why I do so in a moment as well. Okay, so I'm getting rid of this, getting rid of this. I'm actually gonna also turn the background white. Okay. Now, I'm gonna make this larger. And if you can see down here, there's this extra space. I probably have um, literally a space. So I just deleted that and I have this here, okay. I'm just moving this over and this is actually a group so i'm going to make this larger rotate it accordingly all right and then i'm going to ungroup this so i can edit it okay so let's assume the initials were something else all right let's say it's gonna be uh k and h okay again i have a space so i'm just getting rid of that so that's the first one and then I have the dates right so if as you can see these lines here that's aligning with this image um, let me get rid of this so this that line across the letter the the numbers excuse me that's telling me that I'm at the end of this box. As you can see where that dotted line was, that's where this is right now, right? And then the vertical line is the center point of this box in comparison to this other box, okay? So that's gonna allow me to have everything aligned and centered. Okay, now let's say I wanna do the ampersand, right? All I did was copy the smaller box, move that over. I'm going to then get rid of, I think, is there a space here? No, there is a space here. Okay, so I'm gonna actually get rid of the space within this box as well so that my alignment is correct, all right? And then in here, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of this. I don't need any of that. And I'm just gonna do the ampersand, okay? Again, making sure I don't have any extra spaces or anything so all my alignment is correct. And again, I just want to make sure that this is aligned correctly as well. Perfect. This I'm going to move over and I'm going to align it as such. Again, I want it in the middle of the letters. I don't like the placement too much. I know it's the box itself is in the middle, but I kind of want it a little bit more to the left. I'm just going to play with it until it's where I like it. Okay. I like that all right so now what I would do I don't need these so I'm gonna get rid of all of this okay and I'm going to download this I'm gonna also be uploading this as well since this is what I will actually be using oh, excuse me let me group all of this together so 
option, select more, done group. So that's one group, that's the image I actually need. So I'm gonna move this up here and I'm gonna also make this larger so that it's just better quality in general. This is my wifey that I do want. So I wanna make this also bigger, again, just to help with quality, right? Moving this down. Again, I'll just group this as well. And all of this is being done on my iPad, by the way. So it may be a little bit different on your phone and on your computer, okay? And most of this, I'm using my pen tool and I don't have that fancy um, two $300 Apple pen. I did get a generic one from Amazon. I can list it below for you guys if you'd like. Now what I'm gonna do, I only need this one sheet or page, page 27. So I'm gonna go to this little corner here and I'm going to go to the last, I'm gonna go to the top right corner and do the little, it looks like a little staple or open box with the arrow pointing up. I'm clicking on that. I'm gonna press download and PNG is fine. This is easier for the free, right? Now I will do a transparent background. If you do not have, if you see the little crown that does show that it's prime or the pro version and select pages, instead of doing all, I'm gonna just do the current page. So I'm gonna unselect the top one, which selects everything. And I'm going to just select current page. Done, and again, I have a PNG file. I'm gonna increase it just to make sure that the clarity is better. That's my uh, pixels right here, the number. 2160 by 2160 i have a higher pixel resolution now so i have transparent background and just my current page download that's downloading i want to make sure okay it's in my uh, pictures so i'm going to push up and i'm going to open up cricut i'll sign in here really quickly i'm already logged in perfect so let me see what canvas i have in here i might have been working on something previously i was and now I'm going to go to the upload, which is, again, that staple situation or box with the arrow up. I'm going to select from photo library and we're going to select the most recent photo. Because my photo was transparent, I do not need to remove any background. There was no background, so I only have my words. All right. And in part, this is why I do pay for the, the premium. Or the pro, excuse me. I don't know why I keep saying premium. I just put a random letter. I don't need to name this. I'm probably not going to use that again. So I'm going to go to done. And now I have my image. Again, because I did choose a higher resolution, this is fairly large. Okay. Now everything is together right now. There, It is not separated. So I'm going to grab a random shape. And I'm going to cut out the separate images that I want. Okay. I'm going to zoom in to make this bigger and cut out the very first shape, which is the one I will actually be using. So I'm going to now highlight over my main image and my square that I just made, and I am going to slice, okay? That was the square that we originally used sliced out. So if you're gonna stencil something or if you wanna make a sign, you could technically use this as a stencil, okay? I don't need the stencil, I only need this. And then behind it was the original piece that got cut out as well. That was the original item. All right. I only need one of those. So I will delete that. And I still have Wi-Fi connected to this as well. So I'm going to redo this. Um, you can grab another one. Sometimes I like to use the original one and kind of flip it over because I don't need this. Remember? So I can just literally do that and slice again. Now I have both here. So if you have maybe a sheet or a stencil that you want to use, you can even do multiple uh, multiple images with one stencil, right? If you were to get the dimensions correctly or initially before doing all of this. Again, I don't need either of these two, so I will be deleting that. And now I have wifey separate and then I have this separate. This, again, I do not need, so I will be deleting this. All right, these are the two things that I need. Now, if you notice the sizing on this, this is 19.94 inches by 15.09 inches. That is too big. Generally, a woman's, like the print size would be like 11 inches max. Even that might be a little too big. So I think I'm going to do the width about a 10. 
so i'm clicking over to edit i want to make sure that my lock is on so that the image itself does not get disfigured and i'm going to put width at 10 and that'll get me a 10 inch width okay and it's seven about 7.5 in width all right i'm happy with that i like this size i know it's gonna get a nice um a decent size on my hoodie or the sweatshirt excuse me now this this is going on the wrist this definitely is not going to be as big as wifey this i generally do about three inches in width so i'm going to go ahead again and change that to a three and it's a lot smaller and i am okay with that so these are the two things i will be cutting out and again i'm happy with it so now i'm going to press make it if you see here on the left side of the screen i have uh, my mat options i will be using a mat i have a maker three i do have a 12 by 12 mat and i'm also going to be using mirror because this is iron on now i just made a rookie mistake because i did iron on all my images got flipped where they were not the entire mat so i need to remove i need to move everything all over again so if you are going to be doing iron on ideally you want to move like you want to mirror before you make your placements because if not you have to redo the work thankfully i only have two images so I'm not redoing too much per se, okay? I'm gonna push this here and then maybe even move this a little more in, all right? So I'm gonna press next. I don't have my device set up, so I'll show you how to do that really quickly as well. I'm gonna go over to settings. I'm gonna do Bluetooth and Jazz Maker 3. All right, move back over. Now when I press next, it should work and now the light on my Cricut has also turned blue all right which is moving things around I will be selecting everyday iron-on and then this is a new blade so I don't need to do more I'm going to use default all right I did get this on Amazon I will link it for you guys down below what I love about this cutter is that it slides out like this so I can't see more of the measurements okay so going to lift this up and slide this through i do it this way because i can measure it accordingly if you didn't have this and you have a cutting mat for fabric you could also use a cutting mat and even your cutting ruler your quilting ruler it all depends with what you have and what you're working with again i needed approximately eight inches i can even do eight and a quarter which is right here i'm going to slide it up and then push down okay this is not a full square as you can see here by my cutting mat, but I do not need this portion here. This tiny portion is not a part of my cut, so I'm not too concerned about it because I know my Y hangs down further. I'm gonna grab one of my two mats here that I have. And these mats are actually fairly old mats that I've reapplied ad um, adhesion to. If you guys wanna know how I clean and re um, they make my mat sticky again, please let me know. I would love to share all my tips and tricks. There should be a video that has come out, or if not, will be coming out with me working on um, a store decal and some tricks I did with having smaller mats. All right, again, this is heat transfer vinyl, so you have a dull side and you have a shiny side. If you never know which is which, honestly, my favorite thing to do is kind of push it against each other so you can see the difference literally right next to each other. This is a lot shinier, and I can kind of tell that it has the plastic on it, so this is the side we're gonna be cutting on. Again, I wanna line this up up here. And that's why I kind of also move my sign closer into the middle because as you see, it's not fully to the edges, right? So I'm just gonna kind of push down a little to brayer it some with my hands. My Cricut is blinking. I'm gonna try and move it closer into frame here. Um, my Cricut is blinking currently. And again, it's blue, because I do have the Bluetooth um, capability on as well. Place my mat in. It's gonna make sure that it's the right size or that the mat is the right size, whatever's not. If you were using smart vinyl, it would only stop at the measurement that you said that the smart vinyl was, all right? It's not ready, I'm gonna press the play button. So here are my tools. I have this little kit I got off Amazon. 
I want to say it was like a dentistry kit or like just random tools that I found. It was cheaper and I felt like it was more so within my price point. So I got this. I love using the really sharp pointers to be able to pick things up and hold things down, right? And then I have my pin pin weeding tool. I'm gonna take my mat off my machine. You may be able to see some of the cuts. Okay. I am just very quickly going to kind of outline one from the other. Okay, so here's my smaller, more detailed design. Okay, you could technically use an X-Acto knife for that, but the tool is sharp enough that I can go ahead and just do that with the tool. Just slowly pulling that up, pulling against it, getting the middles out here. Okay. Putting it to the side, I'll toss that in a moment. Okay. The easiest way to, to know if vinyl is HTV or even just regular permanent vinyl is that the mat, the, 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 the heat transfer has its own like um, transfer sheet, right? And the sheet itself is sticky, not the vinyl. The vinyl only adheres to the product that you're adhering it to with heat, okay? And depending on that amount and time, or the temperature of the heat and the time, depends on the vinyl that you use, okay? So that part is done. I'm gonna now push the other way to kind of get the larger wifey. I'm just pulling across here nice and slow. Again, I'm not pulling up, I'm pulling against slowly, okay? Little by little. I want to be careful because I know the eye has a dot. I can see that now as well. If the piece is too big, you can always cut it. Or in this case, it broke on its own. That was the dot I was worried about. The rest isn't as intricate, so I can go a little bit faster. Okay. All right, and this is what I was referring to before was that even though this was not a full square, I knew nothing would be here in this corner, okay? So all of this is trash. Um, if I was really being particular, I could have maybe even cut some of this out here as like scrap, but I tend to forget to do that when I'm making tutorials just because I wanna get the job done. I'm also in a slight bit of a rush just because I do, want to get some digital work done as well today, okay? So see, I'm having difficulties picking this up. This is when the tweezers come into play. This helps me pick things up very easily, right? Look at how easy that was. And they're very sharp. If I wanted, with this piece here, I could even poke it and pull it up, right? And now pull it off. It's a very thin cut. All right, and that's it, we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. Here we are now at the heat press. I'm gonna pull it out because my heat press is a pull out. My temperature for reference is at 295 for 10 seconds. So this is a Gildan sweatshirt. I'm gonna kind of move this over a little bit, place this down. And then my sign, ideally, I want it to be across the pit, right? I don't want it too high up or too low. And as you can see, there's a couple things on it. So we're going to go ahead and get the um, roller here. I forgot what it's called for a hot moment. And I'm going to just clean it off, get any lint or any particles that might be on the sweater off prior to me heating it because... 
if it's still on there, the vinyl will adhere to the dust and not the actual sweater, and there will be more lifting in the long term. Apply some pressure. Look at all the lint, right? Gonna pull up again. Do it once more. Try and get it as clean as possible. I have a shared space and I play with yarn as does some of my colleagues. So there may just be fibers in the air here in general. We do not want that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is fold my design in half. Okay. And this side genuinely is kind of tilted so I can kind of play around with it. It does give me a lot of ease. So again, I kind of want it near the pits a little bit. I don't want it too high, not too low. Trying to make sure I'm going to kind of center the sweater with the machine, right? I know that's my middle point. So I have the shoulders here. I'm kind of playing with it. Again, these are my pits, right? So I kind of want it around here. Just playing with the sign. I think here would be best. I'm gonna push it up just so that I can get a better view. I think I like this placement. It's also about a hand's width away, right? Just a few inches down. I like that. I'm gonna go ahead, push the sweater up so that the main part of it's here in the more so the center of my heat press. Okay, this is a hot press, so I'm going to just peel off, okay? Now, the next part does go here on the sleeve, facing this way so that when the person is wearing it, they can read it, all right? So we're going to kind of just move this over to the side here, and then, let me see, let me fold it some so that it doesn't fall off my table. Okay, this is my sleeve, and this will be facing the client, so I'm just kind of facing it towards me so I can get it, again, centered as possible. Clean it off with the lint roller here. Again, use a new sheet. Get it nice and clean. And I don't put it here on the stretchy part just because I don't have white elastic HTV. This is regular HTV. And I prefer for it to be a little bit more stable. All right, same. We're going to fold this in half and just place it, eyeball it, right? Nothing wrong with a good eyeball. That looks good to me. Now we're going to press. Okay. That kind of picked up a little bit there. So what I'm gonna do is push it down and repress it again. I'm covering all of the writing with the same um, transfer sheet that it came with just so that I can get clear pressure. I'm gonna actually push it here so that any bumps and lumps gets flattened out, okay? Let's try that again, maybe push it in. And this is only gonna be for a few seconds because it's already been heated. I just wanna make sure it's nice and adhered to the garment. That looks a lot better. The wording is right across the chest. It is fairly centered, right? I had it, I wanted it towards the pit. So here we are, it's nice across the chest. So even if they're busty, you know, it's not like falling too far down or, you know, whatever it's not, right? Then on the sleeve here, here's where you have your initials. And again, as the person wearing the jacket, I can now see my partner and I's initials and our anniversary date. So it's perfect, it's a nice decent size. It even fits across the palm, right? If you wanna have your hands in the sleeve. And I'm super happy with the results. Let me know what you guys think in your comments down below and I'll see you in the next one.